Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to uh, introduce our, our speaker this afternoon. And as the uh, first female mayor in 20 years and only the second in the history of St. Albert, Kathy Heron embodies the values of our modern community. Serving her second term as mayor and through her leadership, St. Albert actively engages in environmental stewardship, responsible growth, and the rights of our First Nations, LGBTQ, and through the respectful engagement within our community. A graduate of both the University of Alberta and Nate, uh, Mayor Heron de values diverse knowledge, education, experience as pillars for decision making. In addition to her education, Mayor Heron has extensive experience in regional governments, governance, including two terms as a city council prior to the election as mayor in 2017. Mayor Heron understands the values of leading by examples. She serves as president of the Alberta Municipalities Association, board director of the Alberta Recycling Management Association, four years as the a director of the Alberta Capital Regional, Region Wastewater Commission, and an active role in the Capital Region Growth Plan Task Force, and many more. The result is extensive and diverse relationships throughout the region with elected civil and business holders that collaborate with her for a strong and respected city of St. Albert. We can see that today with the attendance. With her partner John, they have a vibrant blended family of seven children, yes, seven, from teenagers to adults and a much beloved family dog, Boomer. She loves the outdoors, and then the weekends can be found sailing in Wobbleman or camping at one of the most beautiful campgrounds in Alberta, and many beautiful campgrounds in Alberta. So please help me in welcoming Mayor Kathy Heron. I honestly don't know how Boomer got into my bio, but I'm sure he would be pleased. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for the introduction, and thank you to the Chamber for bringing us all together here today. Uh, Lauren did a wonderful job with the poet, uh, with the poem, and we are so proud of the Poet Laureate program that the city has. And her and I did not talk ahead of time about what she was saying and what I was saying, but the first line in my speech is this, the opposite of love is not hate. I recently had an email from a frequent flyer, one of those residents who's always upset about something, and emails me far more often than I would like. When I receive constant and frequent criticism, it's easy to discount that person's point of view as, as to marginalize them and as a hater. I will probably never have, make this particular resident happy, and I can confidently say that he and I disagree on most issues. Yet in this particular email, it was thanks, and this meant a lot. He thanked me for what I do for the city. These two type of interactions can be contrary and are confusing, because it is so easy to think that the opposite of love is hate. If you ask me, the opposite of love is indifference. It's when your give a damn is broken. This resident does give a damn. He's engaged, he speaks up when the approach to making our city best is different from my own. He cares that much, I care that much, and I believe everyone in this room cares that much. We care about strengthening our city, our businesses, and our people. Citizenship is a participatory sport. I've got a quote from one of my favorite movies. It's going to be on the screen right away. And put your hands up if you recognize it. You don't have to shout it out, but it's pretty obvious. So acknowledge a man whose words make your blood boil, who's standing center stage advocating at the top of his lungs, that to which you would spend a lifetime opposing at the top of yours. Now show me that, defend that, celebrate that in your classrooms. Then you can say you're standing up and singing about the land of the free. In modern times, we have watered down the term civil to mean simply decorum or politeness. There is a famous acclaimed author, Swanee, and a community builder, who summed this concept up in this quote. In an evolved human society, people love people and use things. But unfortunately, so much of this world, people love things and use people to get them. Relationships between residents, neighbors, and their local government are often characterized by a sense that we owe each other nothing, and the expectation is that we seek to our own advantage in our own way. And that what, which connects us is little more than the fact that we all pay taxes to receive services. Civility in this context makes the absurd demand that we seek our own interests, albeit we do it politely. 
It is up to us to find what unites us. We're here on the same soil with the same dream, the dream that is St. Albert. For generations untold, the people upon this land have always been steadfast stewards of the land and their communities. This is the traditional land of the Plains, the Wood Cree, the Nakoda, the Sioux, and the Dene's people. It is here that they raised their children, and they were the first to love this land. Remember this as we talk today about the challenges before us. St. Albert was founded on Treaty 6 territory, and we want to acknowledge and recognize our connection with the First Peoples of this land. A land acknowledgement should be more than reciting a script. It should be a true acknowledgement of where we stand, who we are, where we came from, and where we're headed. And it really should come from the heart. This is a recognition that we are all, regardless of heritage, treaty people. Treaties are an agreement between two parties, in this case, the First Nations, Indigenous people, and the Crown. As Canadians, we are keepers of this sacred treaty. We all grow from the collaborative work that went into the treaty century ago. It's on this land that I was born and I grew up. And it is that, those opportunities that were provided to me that allow me to serve as your mayor. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. So thank you everyone for taking the time to attend and for your interest in the city of St. Albert. A state of the city is a glimpse, a moment in time. Today I'll be speaking mainly about council strategic plan and the areas of focus this term. Before I start, I wanted to say, um, take a moment to thank a few people whose, without their support, I could not be here today. My partner, John, my children, Holly and Will, are here. And of course, my daughter, Heather, is in Calgary. And I have four fabulous stepchildren, Rebecca, Gabe, Susanna, and Jacob. They are my champions, and I really do appreciate their support. Thank you to all the colleagues from the region, elected and administrative, that are here to learn about what's going on in St. Albert and to support me. And of course, this past October, one year ago, the residents of St. Albert entrusted seven individuals to lead this city, and I would like to acknowledge my fellow councillors today. I won't introduce them all because they were introduced earlier, but they can all raise their hands and wave. They're all here today. Thank you all for making a commitment to work together, to model respectful leadership, and to advocate for the residents of St. Albert. Also last fall, my fellow councillors supported my nomination and election to the presidency of Alberta Municipalities. As you all know, I'm, a passion, I'm passionate about municipal government and regional cooperation. So the logical evolution was to push these concepts to a provincial scale, because not all the solutions will be found here in St. Albert. Many communities have tried, failed, and succeeded. It is wise for St. Albert to learn from others' mistakes and emulate their successes, because the big answers to these questions will be found during these big conversations. Municipalities are guided by provincial legislation, so a big part of our job is to advocate. As mayor, I would always have a voice when promoting St. Albert's view. But as the president of Alberta Municipalities, I am fortunate enough to be able to lead the collective voice, ensuring that everyone in Alberta is heard. heard. This role has kept me busy, and I need to take a moment to thank my council for stepping up, filling in the gaps, doing the ribbon cuttings and the deputy mayor duties, as well as my staff um, in the mayor's office who have provided me so much support and unconditional, essentially, love. So thank you. So it is said that every journey begins with the first step. But in reality, every journey begins with a plan. Therefore, before embarking on our journey that is this four-year term, Council came together to develop a strategic plan for the city. From diversity comes strength. From seven different views came a plan to move the city forward. The strategic plan identifies five focused priorities for our term of office. So given the crowd, I figured I should probably start with economic prosperity. So economic prosperity will continue to be a priority for Council by creating a positive environment for development. Lakeview. Lakeview, it is time to become a reality. This much needed third business park has long been in the making. Last term, we made some significant advancements towards servicing the land by getting utilities across for a given drive. This term, we are determined to explore options in advancing the on-site servicing to Lakeview Business Park, along with the progression of an area structure plan for St. Albert West, which is currently underway. This is going to be expensive and require commitment, yet we look forward to welcoming new businesses to St. Albert and to start to collect tax revenues from this development. A success last term was the uncontested annexation of over 1,500 Acre, hectares of land from Sturgeon County. On January 1st of this year, we welcomed many new residents to the city of St. Albert. 
Now we need to examine the best use of this land, including how much non-residential development. Flourish, our new municipal development plan, has a lofty goal aimed at significantly increasing the split between residential and non-residential assessment and taxation across the entire city. These annexed lands are key to achieving that lofty goal by increasing the supply of industrial and commercial lands in that area. And finally, under this strategy, we're also going to be working on an investment attraction strategy and continuing to work within the region on the collaborative economic development, which we started last term. Another exciting area of focus for our strategic plan is to support a vibrant downtown where people come to live, gather, celebrate, shop, and do business. A vibrant downtown is key to maintaining a tight community feel that St. Albert values so much. There is a richness and a deep sense of belonging that comes from living in a community such as ours with so much history. Our downtown is not just a place, it is the center of our community and the location where it all began. It is a community treasure and our economic and cultural heart. We need to nurture a truly vibrant downtown that is full of people, 24-7, winter, summer, spring, and fall. In March, I hosted an initial meeting of the downtown businesses, a sort of town hall for the parent district. We had a great turnout, and we sparked some great ideas. Three ideas that I'd like to point out were, we talked about a business improvement area. This is a specific geographic area of the city where businesses pool resources and work together through formal association to enhance the economic development and vibrancy of that area. They can do this through marketing, beautification, event planning, and advocacy. This has proven very effective in, in areas that I visit as, my, as the president of Alberta municipalities, and a couple that I would want to point out is Old Strathcona has done a great job. Um, we had a presentation on just this week on Leftbridge, and I've been to Medicine Hat, and they have vibrant downtowns because of BIAs. So we also want to take advantage of the existing walkability of our downtown, something we often take for granted. I want retailers and restaurants to be able to spill out onto the street and participate in the fun. Imagine tables with umbrellas, live music, live performances, shopping, and the visual arts all mixed together for a gathering place that we can all celebrate and be proud of. Another big catalyst for the downtown will be the realization of the long-planned Millennium Park. Open waterfronts create a connective tissue that binds the city together, and they spur so much economic development from the vendors and tourists that spring up around them. This park will represent our personality, who we are as a city, community, green space, the river, arts and history, all part of our identity. We want to create a space that is truly for our residents, a common experience to take advantage of our beautiful river while protecting it at the same time. Millennium will bring financial growth for the city of St. Albert, which is always welcome, but it will also provide something that is priceless by unifying a city and helping to create and define our soul. These are just three of the ideas that we discussed, and many more great ideas will come forward as businesses and residents contemplate the possibilities. The plans are still developing, but I'm excited by the creative ideas that are already surfacing. For years, we've talked about bolstering our downtown. It's time to start to make it happen. Community well-being is of great importance, importance to this council. We want to ensure that we are responding to changing demographics and continuing to foster a community where everybody has an opportunity to participate and feel fully welcomed. St. Albert is leading the way in inclusivity, ensuring that everyone feels safe and secure in our community, no matter their race, their religion, their gender, their identity, or economic situation. If you haven't, you should definitely take in a Pride Festival or one of the African descendant events or discover the new Latin cultural association experience. These are three examples of how diversity adds to the culture and enjoyment of our community. With new residents and this diversity comes the need for housing. According to the United Nations, 68% of the world's population will live in cities by 2050. In Canada, more than 83% of us already do. Cities are the crucible where society's problems come to fo into focus. In Canada, one of the most pressing challenges is a severe housing shortage. Canada would need to build 1.8 million more dwellings to have the same number of housings per capita as the average other G7 countries. St. Albert needs a diversity of housing, from the million dollar penthouse to affordable condos for our youth to digni dignified, supportive housing. This is why we are partnering with Homeland Housing to build a new apartment in the Perrin District with a mixture of affordable housing and market value options. 
Not only will this be fantastic for the growth of our downtown, but it will also add much needed affordable inventory to our city. Council is very focused on Indigenous relations. This, was, this has been ongoing for years, of course, but this term we're not slowing down. We've already approved a staff position for Indigenous relations and are developing an Indigenous advisory committee to support council and administration. Many of the stories and history we are familiar with here in St. Albert were written by settlers. It's now time, actually long overdue, to incorporate the Indigenous stories and perspective into our evolving narrative. Inexcusable social inequities do exist in our city. We do have homeless. We do have vulnerable residents. We do have seniors living on the edge. We have racism. We have youth who are suffering. We are not immune. It is part of our four-year plan to address these inequities. I know we can't solve all the problems, but we need to make progress on these issues. Because, of course, the measure of any society is, can be measured by how we treat our most vulnerable, and St. Albert has work to do. Uh, Council recognizes the need to adapt to a changing natural environment. For the first time, climate has become a focus area for City Council. Our summers are getting warmer, we're not impervious to wildflowers, the resulting smoke, invasive species, droughts or floods. There is a myth that doing the right thing for the environment can only be done at the cost of the economy. In fact, the opposite has been proven true. This past winter, we experienced unprecedented freezing rain, we had lots of thaw and freeze conditions, and of course the resulting turmoil on our roads and our sidewalks. We cannot be so naive as to think this won't happen again. The myth that environmental stewardship is opposed to economic growth has been broken. It has been proven throughout the world that caring for the environment is symbiotic with economic growth. We cannot be left behind in this regard. ESG, or Environment Social Governance, is an imperative for foreign investment and is now part of our municipal thinking and decision making. Shortly after I took the stage, I gave my own unique land acknowledgement. If we truly want to be stewards of our land, then we have a deeply rooted responsibility to care for the lands upon which we built this community. As a city, we can make a real impact. We can find eco-friendly sources of energy. We can raise building standards to ensure more efficient homes and commercial spaces are built. We can develop neighborhoods with an eye on how transportation can be more efficient. We can put more people in one vehicle by making transit an attractive option. And we can lead the way in waste management to reduce our landfills and put less pollution into the Sturgeon River. I'm talking to a room full of business people, so I know you all understand this concept. Any budget consists of two basic ideas, money in and money out. We can either increase revenues or decrease ex expenses. That's how we operate. So for money in for a municipality, we have the revenue of property taxes, fees and fines, and grants from other levels of government. And that's it. We are facing some significant increases next year and in the years to come. There's, this slide, there we go, shows some of the pressures that are contributing to these increases. And I want to point out this is happening across all of Alberta, not just here in St. Albert. St. Albert taxes over the last 10 years have been below the level of inflation. If we were providing the exact same level of service as we were 10 years ago, this alone would be problematic. But we are providing more due to growth. We have grown about 13% in that time frame. This means more roads to repair and maintain, more trails, more traffic lights, more transit routes, more parks, more residents participating in programs, and it goes on and on. We've added new services as well. For example, the Indigenous Relations position I mentioned. We've added traffic calming. We've added disc golf. We've added pickleball. Um, there's new environmental compliances that we have to deal with. We've added social media. We've added freezeways. We've added a lot of new services to our community. We have provincial download issues. So a couple years ago, uh, there was some legislative change that reduced how much money we could take from fines. Um, so we've, we received more money for the fines, and we actually have less fines being given out, which is a good thing. That means people are following the rules on the road, but it affects our budget. That small change in legislation from the province was a $700,000 impact to our budget, which is about a half a percent tax increase. Of course, we've all heard about the lo loss of grants in lieu, and the biggest is the 25% less in infrastructure funding. This is millions of dollars we do not have now to maintain our current infrastructure or build anything new. We are using more gas, electricity, and diesel, and not only are we using more, the cost to buy it has gone up. It is more expensive to build anything, 
cost of debt has increased due to uh, a change in provincial financing authority. I'd include this as another download from the province. Cities are now experiencing the same high cost to borrow. Many of the bids that we are receiving on needed projects are coming in much higher than anticipated due to inflation. And finally, our revenues around transit and recreation have still not recovered from the pandemic. Now many of you are probably thinking, we just need to be more efficient. Well, we've done that work. Significant time and effort has been given to combing through our budget to find those pennies, to do more with less. We're always looking to do more, but essentially these types of measures have been exhausted and cannot be relied upon into the future. I really want to commend our administration here for the amount of work they've done with less money. And of course, no organization is perfect and there are still opportunities for further deficiencies as identified in the fiscal and operational review. But it will help in the short term, but we have actually kicked this can as far down the road as it can, as it can go. And we have all realized the pennies, uh, finding pennies in the budget will not make up for the mass of dollars we need to find. So a city is faced with options when, we, when we're having less revenue and more expensive, and that is, of course, increasing property taxes. Something I know none of us wants, especially at a time when all of our own expenses are on the rise. The last thing any of us wants is higher taxes. And to be honest, I don't know how or if we'll be able to avoid it. And the other final and very unappetizing option is to reduce the level of service we provide. This means doing less with the same amount of money. We've already done some of this. Gas, gas cutting has been moved from every 10 days to every 12 days and more service cuts will have to come. But with these service cuts comes increased dissatisfaction from residents. It's a difficult balance and residents still want synchronized lights, programs and events. And we have a desperate need for more recreation facilities and of course a new pool. Other organizations also rely heavily on our city to survive. The library, our arts community, our museums, and many others are facing the same increases we are facing. And I will state right now, the city has tried their best, but we have no more money to give. It pains me at that time when we have the highest number of at-risk residents ever, we cannot afford to provide groups like SAFE or the food bank with more money. We've seen this coming. I've been quoted many times as saying that year after year low tax increases will eventually put us in a precarious position. I've pushed to increase our reserves, yet now here we are. For years, I've been pushing to explore ideas for new revenue sources. Be it a municipal utility corporation like Edmonton's highly profitable EPCOR, or revenue generating solar farms like Bon Accord and Seth Smith have successfully built. There are other ideas out there, I know there are. We need to explore new revenue op options. Sadly, even if we find and agree upon a project to generate revenue, it's not gonna help us this year, it's too late which is why I tried to have these conversations three years ago, and now we're in a fiscal crisis. And I need an open mind from residents and businesses, and definitely a can-do attitude. If an idea is brought forward, we need to look at it with a filter of how we can make it work, rather than the recently popular assumption that it won't work. When a possible revenue generating project is scrapped, there should be no celebrating. It's not a win, it's a loss for all of us. St. Albert is not an us versus them political system. There is no them, it is just us. We face difficult times, and I want us all to remember that we may not agree all the time. But so long as we remain civil, passionate, so long as we remember that we have the same goal of a great St. Albert for our children, then together we can find solutions. Our give a dams aren't broken, and it's up to us to lead our community. Sadly, social norms no longer dictate the generosity, sacrifice, and warm-heartedness are necessary civic virtues. Today, getting along takes second seat in a world where getting ahead is championed above all else. A government of the people, a democracy, has room for peaceful civil disobedience, a practice that appeals to humanity and a sense of justice not of the opposition, and I don't want to define the opposition as an enemy, but we want to insist that we all do belong to this community. Martin Luther King Jr. described this um, as one who does not seek to defeat or humiliate the opponent, but to win his friendship and understanding. It takes enormous strength of character and dignity to express love in the face of hatred. But I want us to be strong and not to resort to incivility to achieve our goals. As we face the next few years of a fiscal crunch, balancing acts of diverse needs, climate issues, social unrest, I'm calling on all in this room to be part of the solution. Democracy is a system grounded in a universal principle, a sense of justice that says we are all equal in our humanity and before the law. 
that we are all worthy of dignity, well-being, respect, liberty, and security. Citizens need to seek the well-being of their neighbours, their city, and themselves as necessary to the preservation of a democratic way of life. Anything other than that is uncivil. I needed to transition to the next part of my um, speech, so I wanted to put up this quote from our Queen and mention her in my speech. This is her words. We may hold different points of view, but in times of stress and difficulty that we are most need to remember that we, are much more, we have much more in common than that dividing us. And I thought that was a very fitting way to recognize her. Now, I have the pleasure. Shortly after being elected, Council was faced with the task of finding a new city manager. With a clear understanding that we were facing this term, our Council identified that we needed a proven leader who can guide administration through difficult times. The Canadian Armed Forces face the toughest budgets, yet have to be ready with no notice to deploy anywhere in the world. Inefficiency, not giving a damn, and failure are simply not ish options. The leadership of the Canadian Forces are some of the best trained and most respected organizational leaders in the world. In order to overcome these challenges I spoke of today, St. Albert needs that mindset. To share with you his initial views of our city and administration after his first 90 days, on the job and his ideas for our path forward, I would like to introduce our new city manager, recently retired Canadian Forces Brigadier General and lifelong lover of St. Albert. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Mr. Bill Fletcher. Thank you, Mayor Heron. Uh, thank you, everyone. I am destined to disappoint, um, I think, after that introduction. Um, it is truly an absolute pleasure for me to be here today. And, and you know, with your indulgence, I'll just take a couple of minutes of your time um, to offer some initial observations, Bill Fletcher's initial observations, um, not based on my vast municipal experience, based on my 90 days uh, in the chair uh, working on behalf of St. Albert. It was a little bit daunting, to be perfectly honest with you, when Mayor said that I was going to come up and talk initially, because uh, I'm just a dumb army guy, um, and that, that has been my frame of reference forever. So I thought I could come up and do push-ups. Army guys do push-ups really well. Um, you know, perhaps I could come up and yell, because there were folks who thought that, that that was going to be my approach when I showed up in the city. I was just going to start screaming at people, much like the movies. Uh, you know, or I thought I did give myself a haircut b before I came up. Um, but then, you know, I figured I'll just start um, with the reason I am standing here today. First off, making the decision to transit of uniform wasn't an easy one. 33 years in the military, my mom and dad both served in the military, it's all I've ever known. But as a family, we decided that we wanted to put down roots. Uh, next year will mark the longest that we have lived anywhere in our entire lives uh, as a family. I've lived across our great country, I've lived in the United States, and I've served around the globe and all roads have led us back to St. Albert. We have a saying in the Army that uh, home is where the Army sends you, but that was no longer enough for us. Home is here. So we have chosen to settle in St. Albert because it is truly the best community that we have found in which to live, work, play, and in my particular instance, raise a family. I've been serving as your CAO for the past three months uh, and know enough, perhaps, to be dangerous now, uh, but have enjoyed getting to know uh, a number of folks in this room, um, and in particular our city staff, and learning the ins and outs of the job. I come at this certainly through a different lens than somebody perhaps who's grown up through municipal work, but I can tell you um, that I think most of us as leaders um, know people. Uh, people is what we do. And I can tell you that I've been struck by a number of things that Merritt mentioned, the first of which is people. Your city staff are motivated, they are professional, and I tell you, they truly have the best interest of this city at heart. As you heard from the mayor, they consistently work to balance effectiveness and efficiency, which is always a fine line. Every organization can improve, so I'm not here to say that we are perfect, but I'll tell you that your staff are lean, uh, they are motivated, and they are working hard to make things better. Their hard work often flies under the radar. In my first couple of weeks, I was put on a St. Albert Transit bus and we drove around the city to show the number of things that were happening, a number of ventures of which you are all intimately involved in. And as a resident, I was struck by the number of things that are happening that I had no idea about. And that is above and beyond, quite frankly, the day-to-day -day work uh, to keep lights on, um, you know, roads paved and, uh, and folks happy. Transparency and communications, I think, are a big piece for me. Um, 
there are challenges in large organizations and we're working to improve our methods. I would say to you that if there's one thing I think that we need to focus on as a city staff, it's about transparency and communications internal and external to each and every one of you. We will do our level best to keep everybody informed of what's happening and what is planned. People may choose to disagree with what they hear and that's the beauty of a democracy. That's actually encouraged. Debate is healthy and important. But what I would say to you, and I did not read the mayor's remarks before I put in this, is I've been struck by the uncivil discourse that I've seen over the course of this job. And while it is a minority of folks, I've seen too many vitriolic emails um, and indemnifications of people, of people who live in St. Albert on social media and otherwise. I would say that we can agree to disagree but that we should be respectful about it, that we should trust one another, and in those, establishing those relationships and keeping the communication open, um, we can all move forward, regardless of whether we agree on the way forward or not. I consider myself uh, an optimistic pessimist, uh, or perhaps you could say perhaps I'm a realistic optimist. I've spent my entire life planning for the worst case scenarios um, across the world, and we're seeing some of those things manifest themselves now in places like the Ukraine. We are not getting shot at here. We are blessed to live in a city of St. Albert. And that's not to marginalize the challenges and problems, but context I think is very important as we look at uh, together uh, growing our community. And I guess that would be my last observation. Is St. Albert um, isn't a small town. We are a mid-sized city and frankly in the next few years we are on the verge of becoming a very big city because people want to live here. We cannot rest on our laurels, but rather we must embrace and shape our future without losing the essence of community that makes St. Albert what it is. And that will take all of us working together. Thank you again, Mayor, for the opportunity to address everybody today. I look forward to fielding whatever questions the Mayor doesn't want to answer as we go to the next piece. Thank you very much. So welcome to the question and answer. We'll be about two and a half hours here. Questions. Mike's not on. It is on, it is on, but it's not working. What got me? Okay. All right, so if anybody has any questions for the mayor or the AO, would you please bring them forward? Put your hand up, yeah. Put your hand up, there we go. Jennifer? Oh, you're gonna bring the mic around? Okay. On? Yes, it's on. Uh, Your Worship, thank you uh, for your presentation. And, and thank you for uh, you and council and the way you run our city. I think you do an admirable job and I wouldn't uh, want it for half a day. So God bless you all. Uh, last evening I had um, the pleasure of sitting in on one of the stakeholder consultations that, that you didn't uh, uh, talk about actually in your presentation today and that was on the uh, renaming uh, a focus group they're they're looking at putting together a renaming policy for the city and of course uh, uh, we understand the history for that uh, just curious as to why all of a sudden that would be a priority now with all of the priorities you mentioned and, and that you have on your plate yeah, I can start with this one well first of all Joe, thank you for attending the, the consultation. There's, there's a few more, so if you haven't signed up, please do. It's a good opportunity to, to be a part of this process. Um, I guess it could start, it, of course it did start last May um, when the Kamloops 215 were discovered. That was maybe an, an impetus for it. I'm looking at Councillor Jolly because this was her motion that she put on the floor. Um, but I, I would also say that I think it's important to our naming policy currently has a, an appendix with a list of names of historic figures, but they're all people. And, 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 and sometimes, you know, people generations later can be seen on a different lens, and Grandin is a perfect example of that. So we're, we're looking at two things. We're looking at um, a naming policy for how we would name future uh, parks, neighborhoods, streets, et cetera. Probably going to be looking to name them not after people, but other things that are important in the community. And we, we really need to have that difficult conversation about we, what we are going to do with the Grandin name here in St. Albert. It's, um, it, it's been well documented that Bishop Grandin was a, an instrument of the residential schools. Whether he had an ill intent or not, I would probably get into a, quite a big debate because I think he was probably a good person. But 
the intention today is not what we live in. Those aren't our values and virtues of today. So that is the process of it. And so I, I think it's long overdue. I think probably it was cooking and Natalie said from even before that. So um, please participate in that process. It's, a, it's a, not only a way to rename our community, it's a way to actually have good conversations about our values. Over here. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for doing this, and thank you to the Chamber for hosting this great ev annual event. Um, Mayor, what is St. Albert doing to be even more attractive to potential investors in St. Albert? Is this one of those that I could just turn it over to Bill? <laughs> I, I talked a little bit of the, about the investment strategy, and you might be able to add more into that. So I'm actually, I'm going to let Bill have a quick conversation about that one. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks very much for the question. I think um, th there are a number of things. So the, the investment strategy will be the uh, the umbrella or the architecture that defines all our, 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 our efforts underneath it. But the reality is we need to market St. Albert, right? Um, so, uh, and there are a number of ways to do that, both in terms of our own internal efforts, but also through regional um, organizations like uh, Edmonton Global, uh, regional cooperation as we look at collaborative economic development is important. Um, so that will be a, a big focus on is marketing it, but then it needs to be easy to do business here, right? Uh, so we are, we have a program we call Green Tape Reduction, I didn't name it um, for the record, um, but ultimately that's looking at trying to streamline our, our decision making processes and processes, um, and I think following on that, then it becomes being predictable, consistent and open in terms of our communications with, with folks, right? Um, so, you know, I've heard time and time again from a number of folks I've managed to add coffee with that uh, one of the worst things we can do um, is be inconsistent and, and be all over the map. So I think we need to be carefully streamline, validate our, our processes uh, and communicate them and then stick to them. Just, just to piggyback on that, Bill, what can the businesses and the community of St. Albert do to help in those efforts? No, I can do it. Is this on? I, I, a couple of people just left, and if you if you have to leave, it is 1.30. No offense taken, but if you're curious to some of the answers. So, what was the question? <laughs> I was waving. <laughs> Just what can the community, the businesses and yeah. the community do to help in, the, in that regard? Uh, I can give a shot and you can add into it. On, on Monday we had Edmonton Global speak to us about the effectiveness of our investment in that regional um, economic development body. And we talked about the perception that is St. Albert. I think there is a long-held perception that we are, you know, long times bureaucratic, red tape, etc. And, but I know I speak in many businesses, especially at all the ribbon cuttings that I attend, and I, I hear nothing but the positive about how easy it was to deal with our active department or, or licensing, et cetera. So I think the businesses can help um, project that, that concept, talk about it on social media, tell, tell others, and um, that will get, bring the perception that we have out there to a minimum. So spread the word. Yeah, spread very the good. word. Very good. Okay. And did Jennifer and Joel get your, your uh, lapel pin for asking your questions? Oh, I have uh, one more over here. Hi, Mayor Heron. I love you to death. But I just wanted to bring up something. I like your ideas for developing downtown, but I feel that one thing that's not in there is what businesses have been saying forever. We need parking downtown. It's, you can do all those other ideas, but if you don't have parking, it won't work. So just something to think no, about. No, it's good. You know, it's fine. And, and thank you to start off with I love you because that makes me in a good mood. <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you a little bit on that one because we just actually walked through our downtown with our planning department. And they do studies. They count the number of parking stalls in our downtown. It's at 50% capacity. When we walked down there that day, it was middle of the day, there was empty spots all over that parking lot. I think people have to start to remember that parking is very, very expensive. We talked about this at lunch. We, we, we probably will never build a, a parkade. It's not, in our, it's not in our financial capacity to build a parkade. Uh, the owners of the businesses maybe need to park a little bit further so their clients and their customers can park in front. That, that would be one thing you, we could all do. I don't want to talk about paid parking in the downtown. That's not something we're thinking about. 
But I think we need to have the conversation about parking in our downtown and the reality of it. Is it truly a problem? Of course it is when there's something going on at the Arden or during market days, it's for sure. But for the majority of the day, it's not full. And I don't think we need to spend a fortune to build a parkade for a, a, an issue that's um, only there a couple days of the year. Thank you. Oh, you're good? Okay. Oh. Hello, thank you, Matthew McLennan, uh, Councillor from uh, Sturgeon County, Division Three. And my question is to go back a little bit on the taxes. I'm curious if there's more of an appetite to uh, maybe adjust or lower service levels in the hopes that we have a lower or, or no, no taxes uh, increase, but I'm just curious uh, what your thoughts are, if there's an appetite of Council for uh, service reductions, thank you. There is for sure. Um, I, we are having those conversations. Sorry, I mentioned the the, the lawn mowing. Where's Councillor Killick? Where's Councillor Killick's motion at budget to take it from 10 days to 12? And of course, with that 10 days to 12, we we're already getting emails from residents that are unsatisfied, and that saved us how much? Like sixty thousand dollars. We need to find eight million. So those kind of service cuts are definitely on the on the radar. To save eight million through service cuts, we would probably have to eliminate transit altogether or shut down Fountain Park. Well, we are shutting down Fountain Park. Well. <laughs> not, not on purpose. But those big services, like to, so there's, it's a combination of both for sure. And I say that people move to St. Albert because we have a higher level of service. That's why I said it's the most unappetizing option out there. But there's a trade off. It's either services or taxes. So we will be having that conversation all next year, for sure. Okay, good afternoon everybody. My question is for Mike, what's up with the tie? <laughs> <laughs> That's maybe twice in my entire life I've seen with a tie. But um, my question is about um, the Perrin District and uh, you mentioned um, uh, how to uh, fix the problems that downtown has. And I'm just curious about, you know, solution-based thinking, um, what's going to be required moving forward to help out the Perrin District? Business improvement areas that you'd mentioned. Yeah, okay, so you want more specifics on a BIA? What I love about a BIA is the fact that those businesses in the downtown are coming up with the solutions. So all that we do is facilitate um, a, you know, a pool of money for them to use to do marketing or advertising or hire an executive director and um, we've done small things in the downtown. We've made pop-up patios. We, you know, we try to bring festivals. I think our staff at the Arden have been fantastic about some of the concerts they've got on the plaza. Those are things that we can do, but it's going to take the downtown businesses to come together. And the, the town hall meeting that we had in March was, as I said, was very well attended with lots of new faces, lots of new businesses, and they have a lot of energy. So I think that's going to be what's going to be um, the impetus to get the businesses have to stay open past five. We need to have people walking the streets after work, those kind of things. I really want to shut down the street on Art Walk Day, just for an, as an example. But I think there is the BIA needs to be a concept, and I was talking about that in my speech, that people need to have a, a let's see how we can make it work instead of shutting it down right away. Hi, thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Sometime before the pandemic hit everyone, we were doing a lot of discussion about um, attracting a post-secondary institution to St. Albert. And for a number, a large number of reasons, it's a perfect fit. So I'm wondering if the city is still working on that at all? or not? That was not the question I asked, told you to ask, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't have a great, I don't have a good answer that's going to put a smile on your face, to tell you the truth. You, I think you've probably heard in the news about what the provincial government did with, with Athabasca, which Athabasca was our target um, university. So on, quite honestly, and you're sitting with Marg, I haven't had a conversation with anyone about that concept. I think. I, don't, I wouldn't say we exhausted it, but we did let it slide. I don't know if you've heard anything. Uh, nothing. 
Nothing significant to add to that, to say it is absolutely still on the radar, but uh, I'd be lying if I said we were at a mature level of discussion. It's a desire and not a, not a plan right now. Hi. <laughs> uh, Curtis Krauss. Uh, my question is around the new revenue options, because obviously we need solution-based things. Is, is there a plan to have a position or have it under someone's portfolio or have some dedicated leadership to it, I guess is the question. Um, because it, when it gets wrapped up in everything else, it just becomes one more bad idea that the city has. Is there anybody else that has a quit? <laughs> Thank you for your question next, yeah, no. Um, no, there are no plans right now to specifically designate an individual with that as their portfolio. Uh, however, uh, we do have plans subject to ongoing discussions on ultimately council approval to designate um, a temporary position that will be focused specifically on development of the Lakeview Business District. Uh, and they will be focused on uh, development, attraction, and ultimately uh, you know, a successful end state towards that, uh, tied to that specific project. More holistically, it, it still works through uh, the traditional line of our, the leadership through economic development. Over here. Thank you. Kim Armstrong, St. Albert Public Schools. Thank you very much for this opportunity, Chamber, and also for this opportunity to pose a question, probably without an answer. As a, as a, as a citizen of St. Albert for over 30 years, I am deeply grateful for the civil society and the caring community that is, yes, I'm in denial that we're a mid-sized city, but still feeling that we do have a culture that is worth retaining. What I pose, and very excited about the depth and the breadth of your remarks about the well-being of the citizens of St. Albert is we are in a new world. There's no new normal as if there was ever one, but the hierarchy or the divisions or the lanes that governors have been confined to may not meet the needs of thriving communities today. And, and so I guess the question I pose is that with the school boards, the Francophone, the Catholic and the public school boards, and the city working together, now I need to acknowledge that administratively, there's an incredible amount of work, as you acknowledge, that happens behind the scenes. But until we take it to a governance level, that we can actually move forward in collaboration and, and transparency and communication. It's not that we haven't. We've done the best we could with the models we were given by our ancestors. But we need to, I think, as you've acknowledged, update our values and to really recognize them. So my question is, let us, could we continue to look for ways in which we can cross the barriers so that we can come together to pool our creativity, ingenuity, resources, which are diminishing, just the resources, not the other parts, so that we can speak to the state as you've described it today and keep it what we all hope it can be. So that's my question. Yeah. How about yes? <laughs> I think I should probably say, you know, my speech, <laughs> the speech, I hope it didn't sound negative because, and it's interesting that you pointed out the vitriol that you see. It is a small portion of our community. I have spent the last two or three weekends writing out hundreds of um, good neighbor recognition cards. I, it's just a simple email you can send the mayor's office and I write a, I write a note to your neighbor saying how, and I've, he I've heard stories of, of neighbors driving their, you know, their neighbor's mom to the doctors or mowing lawns or babysitting kids or baking cookies or fit, mending fences. It's St. Albert's values of small town, that small town feel are very much alive and well in our community, even though we are growing quite quickly and, and we will be 100,000 in a few years. It's, it, it is still strong. So I, I, 
the call to action in my speech was about the people in this room because you are leaders in this, and I and you and I want and I know you all want to be part of the solution, and so it, we just need to make sure that we're all civil with um, with the negativity that comes our way. We don't we don't resort to that incivility. So I hope that came across. But Kim, yes. Uh, good afternoon, Anita Grande Armit from Sasha. I laud you both for extremely well articulated uh, uh, f picture of our future. I've only been in St. Albert six years. I'm in Edmonton. I have been an Edmonton resident all, all my life, and I always knew that St. Albert had a very special and different and almost uh, this pride that came from anybody who lived here. Even though they all worked in Edmonton, there was something particular about living in St. Albert. So I laud both your efforts if you're trying to get these people who do live in St. Albert to bring their businesses that are on in the peripheries to this city because then it'll be an extraordinary uh, achievement on your part. I, I used to work in downtown Edmonton as a, a marketing manager, and I know that parking was the worst headache for anybody downtown. And as a marketing manager, I, did, I thought, how do I bring people downtown if they're not willing to pay for it? So kudos to you if you don't want to turn to parking um, uh, fees. But we, you, have an, you have one of probably the most extraordinary river walks you know, only maybe next to San Antonio, Texas, that is renowned for its river walk. And I am a walker, and I live in Brayside. But I have to tell you, one thing that I am just astounded with is the the aesthetics of Sturgeon and St. Albert. I have I am one of those people on my walks who calls your public works. My name is probably already on somebody's baffle. But the, the, as a walker, you have to look where you are going in St. Albert, because you, you, you could go flying if you trip on an upended brick. But that intersection at Sturgeon and uh, St. Albert Trail, whatever that development is, is an eyesore. And I apologize to anybody who might have money in that venue. But if that is in effect, the entrance to the downtown of St. Albert, and now with a shutdown 7-Eleven, it is aesthetically very pathetic. And as a walker, I walk down Sturgeon, have to cross to then cross St. Albert Trail just to go back. So this is the way I am going just to get to the library or downtown. That is core. That is, it's like anybody's business. The person at your front desk, the, the person in your entrance is your business's face. And to me, that is the entrance to St. Albert. And it is in dire need of improvement. I would agree. Our, our downtown area redevelopment plan calls for a, a, a very appealing entrance and the 7-Eleven site is, is, is part of it and then I would say what's there now is better than was there but the Blind Pig Pub. <laughs> Bill and I actually did call the developer into City Hall to have a conversation about cleaning up the site and getting moving. We've had some assurances although it still don't see a lot of activity there. I asked, we, the council did ask about even opening up the sidewalk and road, and, and we could have, but I, I, you'll notice today, or yesterday, we started a bunch of sewage work in the downtown. So once that's all done, I'm assuming if niche isn't getting going, we can probably open up that sidewalk again. But when niche is done, when that project is done, it's going to look beautiful, and it will be the entrance that you're talking about. Okay. I think we're out of time. Thank you very much, everybody, for the questions. Thank you, Mayor Heron, and thank you, Bill Fletcher, for coming up and answering these questions. And uh, we'll turn it back over to the illustrious Gary Wetch and his silver spoon.
Whatever I said, I agree with. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for coming. Uh, Kathy, great speech. Uh, and like usual, we'll give a donation to a charity in your name. Uh, remind everyone the next lunch will be held Wednesday, October 12th. It'll be a sunny day at the Spur Surgeon Golf Course. This is the lunch where we hold our board election. Please come out and remember our guest speaker. Have a great day. Meeting adjourned. Hit the gavel.